Okay, so we start the session with the talk by Vladimir Kazakov from Paris, Normal. and he will talk about duality weighted graphs and 2D quantum gravity. Please. Thank you. Duality weighted graphs. And duality, sorry, <laughs> duality. <laughs> <laughs> well, who knows? Maybe duality. Uh, maybe. Okay, so I'm very uh, honored to speak on uh, the conference you were dedicated to uh, Dave Mitch Sacher Centennial. Here on this, um, uh, on this picture, uh, he is with his wife, Helena Bonner, in, uh, in the Niz Gorky, Nizhny Novgorod kitchen, their kitchen. And I'm sorry to say that he was in exile at that time when I was a student there. And then, uh, so it's a very familiar setting, this kitchen for, 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 for all of us. Okay, and I will uh, I'll speak today um, about that, uh, an old activity which we decided to revive a little bit with further the Polish uh, Maslut. Uh, so, Partially, it will be a review of our old papers uh, with Staudacher and Winter, uh, and uh, then a few new results which we, uh, which we obtained by further, uh, with further, which will be published soon. And it goes about uh, sim about summing uh, over uh, various uh, uh, planar graphs, well, triangulations, quadrangulations, and the kind of which you see here, uh, out of which this, uh, these sculptures are made. Uh, but uh, of course, we can modestly only uh, some uh, speak about the number of these uh, of these quadrangulations without studying them very much uh, locally. Okay, uh, so uh, first, first of all, uh, the definition of duly weighted graph and some applications. This graph is uh, fam a graph familiar to many of you, uh, planar Feynman graph, which is depicted here by double lines. Uh, and um, uh, there is a, also a dual graph corresponding to, to the faces, yes, which is uh, depicted here by, do uh, by uh, dotted lines. And uh, we attach couplings as usual to the vertices, like here with three neighbors, we have T3, with five neighbors, we have T5, but not only those uh, uh, couplings, but also the weights corresponding to the faces. Like here we have six neighbors on the dual lattice or on the face of the other six. Uh, we attach here the weight T T6 star, dual weight, uh, here T4, etc. So this is the definition of dual graph, but the graph should be planar, yes, drawn by these double lines. Uh, fat graph, as the mathematicians call it. Now, what is the, uh, so the, I will use this uh, abbreviation, duly weighted uh, graph, DWG. What is the DWG partition function? It's just the sum over such planar Feynman graphs, but we weight not only the vertices, uh, with this TQ in the number of uh, to the power of the number of such vertices of the other two, but also the dual vertices, same kind of dual vertices. Then it's a much richer model, and in my opinion, a very natural model, uh, 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 which describes some very interesting and uh, diverse kind of combinatorics of graphs. And uh, we can start, uh, we can actually try to solve all the new problems of graph counting such as, for example, uh, this partition functions, uh, function with appropriate uh, fixing of couplings with just render five plateau bodies, for example, or of course, then you would generalize to more complicated bodies uh, and count them, uh, various problems of uh, tilings, of uh, counting of polyhedra, et cetera. And, uh, uh, you can all, for example, using this model, you can uh, construct the largest model of ADS2, which uh, is depicted here. It's a triangulation, and each vertex contains only six nearest neighbors. Uh, 
such uh, configuration cannot be fixed in uh, uh, for simple fine, for fine and graphs weighted only by the couplets of the cube. You need really to fix the faces as triangles, and you need uh, dual couplets as well. So here in this model, you can exactly uh, settle it as ADS2. Uh, then uh, this uh, the number of neighbors in such triangulation is usually associated uh, with the uh, at each vertex, which is associated with the curvature, which is proportional to to the deficit of the angle, or proportional to six minus the number of nearest neighbors. So here it's minus one. Which is uh, which corresponds to the uh, uh, negative curvature insertion in each vertex. So we have constant negative curvature. Uh, continuing this uh, analogy, we can remember the old models of 2D quantum gravity introduced uh, in the middle of the 80s, um, where the manifolds, the fluctuating manifolds, uh, have been uh, uh, were characterized as. Uh, uh, fluctuating uh, structure of such uh, planar graph uh, again with the same um, with the same definition of curvature at each point but this curvature fluctuates now and uh, this can be described of course as it was, it was shown by standard one matrix model uh, to be pure quantum gravity for example but once we have these uh, new couplings we can for example see the approach uh, of these fluctuating manifolds to the almost flat or even just flat to the natural space by fixing T star uh, to be only the coupling corresponding to triangles, for example. So we can see this transition between uh, very quantum many to dimensional manifold and flat manifold, and the approach to it can be universal, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We hope at the time that it will describe a new that some new phases. Uh, uh, where we have curvature square insertions. Of course, they are dimensionful in, uh, in the model of two dimensional gravity in the continuous model. That's why um, we didn't discover a new phase, but uh, still there is an interesting universal regime describing both uh, phases at the same time. Okay, that's a small motivation. Uh, now, um, now let me. Uh, describe the matrix model which generates this uh, uh, this uh, partition function of evaluated graphs, which is a step towards the solution of uh, towards, uh, uh, real counting of such graphs. And I will show you that in principle, this is a solvable, solvable model from the very beginning. Uh, okay, here is the model of my matrix model of evaluated graphs. Here we already have exponent of uh, this partition function of TVG. And uh, you have almost uh, the familiar uh, Hermitian one matrix model, except that you introduce, uh, uh, you multiply here in the potential in the non Gaussian part, or Gaussian plus this extra term. You add, uh, you have A M, where A is a fixed uh, Hermitian matrix. It can be taken uh, in diagonal without the loss of generality. And what does it produce to final graphs if you expand it uh, or all couplings if you, it produces the insertions in each loop, in each uh, here, instead of just uh, chronicle symbols, you'll have insertions of A, A, A around the loop, which means that around the face, you have a collection of A's exactly by the number of order of the loop, so that in this uh, loop, for example, you have after tracing here the loop, after uh, contracting the indices, you'll have traced A to the six, yes? And here, for example, trace A to the four, according to the order of the phase. And uh, then you can associate the couplings to star, which we uh, introduced in, in this. Uh, partition function of evaluated graphs, uh, which will be traces of A to the Q, the Q equals six, for example, here. And in the larger limits, actually, uh, you have big enough matrix A to uh, uh, to parameterize all couplings in independently. For finite ten, of course, they will be dependent, but. Uh, the good news is that uh, in this model, at any order of one over n, uh, 
uh, expansion for any topology still holds uh, you parameterize all the couplings independently and uh, then then it is uh, it's it then uh, to those who knows the uh, I mean the uh, what is the plan of graph expansion immediately it will be clear that we have the original partition function this one of the free energy of such a matrix model uh, which we did not see then okay so at least we have already the matrix model um, per, uh, counting these graphs now we have to solve this matrix model um, and for, uh, first of all I introduced two types of calculable loop averages which correspond to uh, to the disk partition function so I do not disappear but disk partition functions as we know for example if we calculate uh, if we have trace ma to the power l same type of term as here of course we can obtain it by differentiating the partition function to with respect to the corresponding coupling q equals l and we will pick the vertex um, of corresponding order l and it corresponds also to the boundary this uh, uh, by the dual picture uh, this is a phase which can be of any length and we have at the end uh, a particular uh, this partition function and another this is a calculable quantity as we will show and another interesting calculable quantity is the just trace m to the n which uh, also has very simple uh, interpretation in terms of graph you have just l uh, legs pointing out of this graph and uh, this is the dis another discovery whether it's inside it it is weighted of course with all this uh, original and dual weights okay so these are two quantities which are interested in apart from the partition function and let's now see how to solve this matrix model this uh, of the elevated graphs uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, the first step so i i write again uh, the matrix integral the first step is to notice that we can expand exponent of potential uh, into the characters of this element a n and all the GLN characters and also uh, the, as the coefficient it will be the character of um, of uh, sure character uh, uh, of the couplings tq uh, the definition uh, and then uh, i will give the definition of these characters uh, the next step but just first of all uh, i just uh, say that the characters are characterized by uh, by the young tableaus by representations GLN representations h are the collections of n highest weights which are the length of these columns what we introduce the shifted highest weight uh, it's the number of boxes plus i minus one which is a more convenient uh, quantity as many of you know and now we have uh, this expansion of exponent of the potential and then we uh, as usual we average over the angles we can diagonalize or we just can pull out the angular variable sun variable out of the matrix m and uh, integrate over the relative angle between m and a it's a part of degrees of freedom here and due to orthogonality uh, of representations of characters this character will immediately split into two characters one of them uh, will depend on the matrix a but just in the way in the same as this character depends on the couplings t and another one will depend on the matrix m um, uh, which we have still to integrate out uh, so the character i, I uh, remind of the sure character the characters are determinants of sure polynomials uh, represented in this form and um, uh, sure polynomials are defined as usual by this standard exponential generating functions uh, so um, so now we have this expression the, the, the last step is to integrate uh, the character with the gaussian measure with this gaussian measure which can be done explicitly here is the formula 
uh, it is expressed expressed uh, entirely in terms of uh, high weights h. And uh, sorry, I have I had to give the definition here. The highest weights are split into two groups: even and odd highest weights, but still not or no odd numbers. And uh, for non-zero contribution, there should be equal numbers of even and odd highest shifted highest weights in the diagram. And then collecting all these facts together, we uh, express uh, the partition function of this matrix model in terms of sum over Young tableaus with these equal numbers of odd, uh, odd and uh, even highest weights. You have this factor here with uh, double factorials and product of differences and also product of two characters of highest weights uh, of uh, original and dual couplings. They are now appear in different characters. It's a very symmetric expression, which is natural. Yes, original dual graphs are in principle uh, dual to each other. So uh, you can formulate it as an original or dual matrix model. Um, and um, also the mm, uh, we notice that uh, we notice that uh, we have only n highest weights now, uh, but the factors here are of the order e to the n square, like characters, uh, all these double factorials, product. They are, so the energy under this partition function as a sum of highest weights is of the order n square, whereas we have only n highest weights, which means that we can apply, like in this. The eigenvalues in this simple matrix model, we can apply the subtle point approximation, which can, so uh, our the result for planar uh, duly weighted graphs should be given by a single big young tableau, which shape we have to establish to solve the problem. Okay, now some uh, facts about characters. Maybe uh, I shouldn't give uh, I give this talk for the first time, so I don't have a good. Uh, uh, Feeling of the time, how much I need. So maybe I will skip some of the technicalities uh, at some point. But uh, one simple, uh, just to show you, uh, to show you the technique here, which we applied on the road with Staudacher and Winter. Uh, we use first the identity for sure uh, functions of this kind. Um, the coupling here is the sum of ratios of characters where uh, the highest weight of the, these characters in the, in the numerator is shifted by Q units. Q is uh, the label of T, the order of the vertex. Namely, we add to each highest, uh, this upper character, uh, we add to each case row uh, Q units, then we reshuffle it because character is an asymmetric function. Uh, to order the weights, uh, divide by uh, the character uh, without shift. And this is the identity following from the definition of uh, true polynomials. And then we, uh, since character is antisymmetric function, so it's very not very nice for large and limit, we normalize it by Vandermond, which is the dimension of representation, actually. Uh, so we represent this ratio as exponent of the difference of lobes, then x the Vandermonds come here, then the next step uh, of this formula can be represented in this way, where f is in the large and limited simply a derivative with respect to q, it's a very small shift on the background of very big young tableau, so after Little manipulations, exponenting the exponentiating this and the large and limit, we, we get this nice integral representation. So the TQ, uh, 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 it's just the contour integral of a power of function g of h, which is uh, defined in the following way: f here. Uh, so g is uh, this guy e to the minus h minus f. F is the logarithmic derivative of character. It uh, bears all the uh, information about uh, the large character of young, uh, large, large young tableau. And H is the resolvent of highest weights. Just, uh, it's and the symmetric part, for example, on the cut uh, for this function is the density of highest weights in the young tableau. So characterized by continuous function, the big young tableau. 
um, and uh, knowing these two functions f and h or g and h for example we know uh, everything about uh, about the quantities we are uh, trying to compute so now we so we have already this nice relation between g and the couplings um, uh, the density typical density looks as follows you have an empty part of part uh, finite empty part of young tableau which gives you rho equals the constant equals to one and also the decaying part between b and a which bears uh, the most valuable uh, dynamic conformation here and um, the cut uh, corresponding cut the, uh, the support of eigenvalues is between b and a on the real axis of uh, highest weight parameter h continuous highest weight parameter okay now similarly with the same manipulations we can get another nice formula this uh, ever uh, this sort of loop average which we already mentioned once uh, which cor corresponds to the um, this partition function is another contour integral of the same function but with positive power scale here it's negative here it's positive power okay contour integral around uh, this cut between b and a uh, another nice formula is for another type of uh, loop average m to the l uh, which is co given completely in terms of h of h uh, so we have to compute at the end these functions g and h um, and uh, actually here we come to the uh, algebraic uh, to the necessity to construct the algebraic curve of um, um, uh, for this uh, for this type of functions or for at least one of these functions uh, in occasion it's g function and it appears have uh, from previous identities it appears to have this nice form it has the expansion in, into positive powers completely characterized by the polynomial so it's a finite sorry it's a finite polynomial uh, which is g v prime g uh, plus uh, uh, this infinite tail of negative powers, which sums up into uh, the resolvent of M A, which we need to find. So if we know the function G, we just invert invert this function uh, as H of G, and we 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 have the uh, the quantity we are looking for. What we have to compute this GFH function. Uh, okay, there are some facts uh, which I might skip to become probably complicated. So we study carefully the uh, the Riemann surface of this function G of H. It appears to be that uh, it has Q sheets according to the power of the potential, and the product of these sheets gives um, uh, the exponential of H of H. Uh, okay, I'll just uh, tell you this fact, and there are two cuts uh, there is a sheet uh, sheet of this function where there are two cuts uh, cut of uh, f and another cut of h um, uh, now okay the resolvent for m the similar formula i skip there is a nice parametric representation of uh, this resolvent w of the matrix m itself uh, through the h of h it's just this explicit uh, representation. So if we calculate h of h, we know w. Um, and uh, now a particular problem. We have five minutes to explain about the particular problem. Uh, maybe five minutes more because we start slightly later, yes. Um, so we want to sum up quadrangulations. Now we fix, so this is a disk, quadrangulated disk, disk for example. Here it's a quadrangulated sphere. And uh, then we fix TQ star to delta Q4. So only squares survive as dual vertices, which you cannot do in the usual matrix model. Yes, you have to do it with duly weighted graph matrix model. Uh, and then we also introduce a sequence of uh, weights of original weights, T2, T4, T6, in such a way that they, uh, they decrease in exponential way just for simplicity this is the model which we can solve explicitly uh, 
elliptic functions. Uh, so T2 will have the weight lambda. This kind of vertex where two squares come together. T4, a piece of flat space here, a flat lattice, um, already has some uh, extra power of beta, and it goes so on with negative curve with this larger vertex negative curvature insertions. They will be uh, suppressed by powers of beta. Beta is less than one, of course. Uh, the potential can be summed up, summed up in, of the matrix model can be summed up into this form, and then um, uh, then actually it's easy to see that we end up with the riemann hilbert problem uh, because from algebraic curve we get uh, there is a nice function two f plus h f characterizes the character h the distribution of phase weights there is a nice uh, function. Uh, 2f plus h plus log h, uh, for which we get all the Riemann uh, Hilbert data. So on the uh, um, so on the cuts uh, of C, uh, CF, we, we get this equation. The right hand side is just a constant, and um, we also have a subtle point equation just from the. Uh, partition function from the representation for highest weights. We have another uh, equation where uh, slash this means uh, that it's a principal value part uh, of the function f on the cut on the cut here and correspondingly of h here. So it appears that uh, we have only two cuts on it on corresponding sheet. And for this function 2f plus h, we have just elliptic uh, Riemann surface. And uh, okay, we can immediately solve the, write it in terms of Cauchy integral. Uh, so the Cauchy, uh, the quantum integral surround corresponding cuts, CF and CH, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, then the solution can be obtained explicitly as we obtained it in Staudaff and Winter uh, for the density of highest weights, uh, just in terms of elliptic theta functions, theta four. Location and this is elliptic sign uh, with the parameters which can be expressed through original couplings uh, using the asymptotics of the function h of g, which I presented somewhere there. Um, okay, then, um, and then uh, by adding the right uh, in the subtle point equation, which, which has slashed here in h, adding minus i p rho. On both sides of the equation, I, I recall that we, we restore h in the sum point equation on the left hand side, and we get a nice. Oh, what's going on? Uh, we get um, finally uh, a nice expression through this function, which we found uh, through the density. So h plus 2f is the density of highest weights, actually. Um, Okay, then using this solution, now I come to the results. Uh, uh, we want to, this is elliptic solution which uh, characterizes any surface, any quadrant relations of finite size of finite uh, length of the boundary, etc. But now we want to, uh, to have some information about big manifolds which can be fluctuated by a flat, uh, relatively uh, small fluctuated matrix, matrix or being even flat. So first of all, we study we can study the flat limit when beta goes to zero. We suppress all the curvature. Then we sum up, uh, except of uh, a few defects which we need to actually for topology to close the topology of our surface. Then we have this kind of uh, summing up. This, uh, so we have one big um, uh, somewhere at the root of this. Uh, picture we have one big vertex and the rest are just uh, the vertices of balance two or four so we sum up this kind of crystals and uh, in particular case when this k is equal to one so we have only four two vertices uh, we sum up uh, this kind of as we call it two space tubes uh, which are nothing but uh, torus and some of the quadrangulated torus, which reminds you probably maybe, uh, uh, which reminds you the sum of our instantons uh, in the sting theory. So partially, uh, Arkady was right about duality <laughs> in our model, uh, and of course it is given through the Dedekind function. 
here. Uh, the large area limit when there are very many squares is characterized, of course, by very small modulus. And in this, uh, and we, uh, but we, now I quickly present the result even for not with almost flat surfaces, but uh, turning on the, uh, the higher uh, curvatures, the curvature defects, like negative curvature, etc. So beta and uh, beta is non zero now, this parameter beta, it suppresses the curvature. Okay, then uh, we search, our physical goal was to search for universal regimes when the details of regularization are insignificant, for regulations, triangulations that matter. And uh, so far, maybe the, uh, we didn't find uh, 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 some absolutely new regimes, but we computed many curious quantities uh, to the old regimes, like almost flat or uh, quantum gravity, uh, to the quantum gravity, namely, uh, so uh, the large area is, uh, so how to, how to go to the large area? Uh, the distribution of highest weight becomes very flat. So here the derivative is zero. Uh, and, uh, so we tune the parameters, the couplings in such a way that the derivative is zero. Then we have very big surfaces for large number of triangles, uh, uh, squares. And uh, then we uh, study a near flat limit where the defects, uh, the curvature defects are quite sparse, but still uh, it's a, it can be characterized uh, as a, smooth manifold. Um, then with some parameterizations, we can compute the, the, this uh, partition function of disk. The, the W of G is the resolvent of uh, this AM matrix, uh, which corresponds to the disk. Here is the solution, the full solution, which we found with uh, further, of course, must look, uh, must look uh, in the old papers only the partition function was found, but here we have the disk partition uh, in terms of uh, the circle of science and the scale parameters uh, of y, which encode um, sort of y is sort of boundary cosmological constant and x contains the, the bulk cosmological constant. Uh, now, if we now we can study this solution in a couple of interesting limits, name, namely pure gravity limits. Uh, when we, huh? Like three minutes and then finished, okay? Yes, yeah. I started slightly later. <laughs> so in three minutes I finish. Okay. So we tune uh, bulk and boundary was more constant to zero by fixing the, the ratio, this ratio. This is a standard uh, to the gravity limit for, uh, for the disk. And we expand around one of these parameters and up to some uh, irrelevant uh, non-universal terms, we found the same old disk partition function, universal disk partition function as a function of this Z. It's absolutely universal uh, form, which appeared, I think, uh, in my early paper first. Um, uh, so we just, we, uh, reproduce the 2D quantum gravity regime for this. And then in the almost flat limit, we also reproduce the old result from our papers uh, when I showed you what is almost flat. Uh, this is uh, all results uh, corresponding to the, this con summing up these configurations. And a little new result we found with further also is the result of M matrix, which we found explicitly. Uh, I'll spare you. The detail, but uh, it is uh, absolutely this quantity. Um, okay, concurrence and problems. Uh, so we can count the number of planar graphs with both original and new weights of various topologies, here, disk, cylinder, etc. Uh, we may solve a rich variety of solvable, uh, of combinatorial problems of graph counting. Uh, the limit of very big graphs and long boundaries show interesting universal regimes of fluctuating 2D manifolds, quantum quantum gravity, almost flat surfaces, etc. Uh, 
the problems which are very interesting, which has led to uh, so to construct the general spectral curve of DWG, like it was done, for example, uh, uh, in uh, various papers for two matrix model using model and random graphs. So, in, like in our paper with uh, uh, Marshakov and the papers of etc. Um, then, and also the question of integrability. It might be that this uh, sum of our uh, highest weights uh, is a tau function, but we couldn't uh, we couldn't figure out which one. So it's another interesting question. Okay, and also can we find more interesting regimes like uh, Jacob stated on gravity? That's a question which which is not yet resolved and it stays open. Okay, thank you. That's it. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Very quick questions. No questions, then maybe we'll have a discussion session as well. So maybe during discussion. So 